Hi, welcome to Sean's Game Academy. Module 2 Physics. The first thing we need to learn is how to make Sean jump. However, before we can jump, we need to do three very important things to our game. And these important stages are Game Loop. This controls the whole game from now on. Collision Detection. This checks if your character is on the floor or hitting a wall. Gravity. I'm pretty sure you guys know what this is, but it makes sure your character comes back down to earth after you've pressed jump. Game loop. So, I know what you're thinking. What is a game loop? Why do I need one in my game? Well, the game loop is the engine of the game. It sends out commands in a specific order, powering all of the other objects. It's like a big brain. You can build games without using a game loop, but we think that this is the best way of doing it. We've made you a new sprite called Game. This will be your game loop. It doesn't need any costume, as it's meant to be invisible. In the scripts for the game sprite, add a new when clicked block and a new forever loop. Now we need to add new messages for the game sprite to send. We do this with a broadcast message. Add a new broadcast message and make a new message in the drop down menu. This brings up a new pop up box where you can name your message. You'll need to call this message move character. Now add another broadcast message and create a new message called update animation. Your game sprite should now be broadcasting these two messages and hopefully look like this. What the script is now saying. When the green flag is clicked start a loop broadcasting these messages over and over again. At the moment this isn't doing anything, as our other sprites haven't yet been coded to listen to the messages that this sprite is sending. So here are a few changes we need to make to the other sprites so that they listen to the game loop. First off, we need to change the character sprite scripts. Select the character block and open the scripts tab. Drag the two if statements out of the forever loop. Now right click and delete the when clicked block and the forever loop. We deleted the when clicked block and the forever loop as we should only ever have one of these in our game. Now we have to add something that listens to the messages received from the game loop. Select the character sprite, add a new when I receive messages block and select the message move character. Snap this block to the top of the scripts. Now this sprite moves when the game loop tells it to. If you think of the game loop as the control center and the other sprites are just responding to the commands. Now we need to add a new receiver to the animation sprite. Select the character animation sprite, remove the when clicked and the forever loop, add a new when I receive messages block and set it to receive the message update animation. Then reattach the scripts with the when I receive block at the top. Hopefully your scripts will now look like this. So the sprite will now listen for the update animation message coming from the game loop. Only having one forever loop means that we can control the order that the game processes information. The game loop is currently telling the game to move character and then update animation in that order. Clever, huh? Having more than one forever loop means the game might not work how we want it to. Well done. I know that bit was tricky, but knowing this stuff will make building the rest of your game more straightforward and most importantly, more stable.